So last time we looked at Azure ARM templates, now we're going to look at how to create Azure ARM templates from scratch in Azure ARM templates part two. Wow. So before we start anything, what we're going to do initially is create a new GitHub repository. So let's go and create a repository here from the GitHub desktop. Uh, we'll go and create a new repository on my hard drive and then we'll upload it and synchronize it to GitHub. Let's call this repository something. Uh, let's call it ARM templates demo. Uh, we'll just create that repository and we'll publish this repository up to GitHub. We will go and open this in Visual Studio Code and we'll use Visual Studio Code as our main input point here for building our ARM templates. So before you even want to start in here, check out your extensions and make sure you've got the Azure tools installed. These are going to be very useful because the Azure tools will also actually have the Azure resources logged in here as well and will make working with ARM templates a lot easier. There is also um, ARM template manager here for graphically displaying the ARM templates. You want to install this one as well. There's a few others like ARM template helper tree view, an ARM param generator, an ARM template visualizer. Have a browse through. There's a whole number of different extensions that people have built for ARM templates. So back in our explorer, we need to go and create a new ARM template from the ground up. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new file. And we're going to name this file Azure deploy.json, which is just a standard file type. The first thing we actually want to do in this file, in fact, let's just go and create another one called notes.txt. What we're actually going to do here is we're going to build an ARM template um, that is going to create a storage account. And within that, we are going to add some parameters and we're going to add some variables to this um, storage account deployment. So the first thing I want to do is I want to define a schema. So we're gonna paste this inside here. Uh, this schema management is going to define the actual schema version that we're using. In this point, it's version 1.0.0.0. Now at this point, you can actually even deploy this thing directly into uh, Azure if you really want to. There's a few ways of doing that, but one of the ways that I personally like to do is take the file that I've made and commit first file, commit to GitHub. Things I'm going to do to this GitHub repository, it's currently set to private. I'm just gonna come here and change the settings of this GitHub repository just so this is actually public, so that you guys can go and have a look at this after I've completed this demo. So let's go and change that visibility, and change that to public, and I want to make this a public repository. And do a git clone, and paste in my text. Now I should have a repository called ARM template demo. Do an ls on that, and I have my Azure deploy.json file. Okay, so we can see this Azure deploy.json file just has the schema definition inside here as well. But we can, if we want to, just deploy this. So let's go and create a new Azure resource group. So we'll go and grab a little bit of PowerShell code here, and we'll just create a new resource group called my resource group in central US. So if I do new dash az resource group resource group deployment, and set the name to a blank template and we'll set the resource group name to my resource group and set the template file to dot forward slash azure deploy dot json this will initiate a deployment based on that ARM template. There's nothing in the ARM template, there's just a schema. We should still be able to see that that deployment actually succeeds. So that's currently succeeded. If we go back into the portal itself and we go and have a look at my resource groups and we have a look at the resource group I just created, 
which was called my resource group down here in central US. You'll see nothing is deployed, but if we click on deployments, a blank template was actually set or sent to here. So we know this process actually works. Let's start to add some resources to our ARM template. So dropping back to the ARM template, we want to add resources here between these two square brackets. I'm just going to paste something in here and we've got microsoft.storage forward slash storage accounts where we can provide, for example, unique names here into this system. The unique names is really important here. If I use a name like, for example, Apple, this is going to attempt to create an Azure storage account called Apple. It will have been taken. You have to have a unique name that hasn't actually been used in Azure before. Uh, one of the issues here within creating a deployment template like this is the fact that it doesn't actually do any checks. I'm just creating a simple JSON file here at the moment. Uh, so you want to make sure that this is a completely unique property. So I might call this Mike arm template demo uh, banana and hopefully somebody has not taken that unique name inside Azure. I could if I wanted to deploy this now. In fact, you know what? I will. So I need to save this file and recommit this to GitHub. Recommit my changes, adding changes. This is kind of the process you really want to do when you're working with ARM templates is making sure to save your code and making sure to commit your code. If I drop back into the Azure portal and I drop back into my dashboard, I'm still in that same Git repository. So if I do a Git pull, I will end up receiving the latest changes down here, the ones that I just made. And if you do a cat dot slash Azure deploy dot JSON, you'll be able to see those changes have been added. If I go and rerun the command that I had before, which to actually just do that same deployment, in fact, instead of actually having that cut off the end, let's do a clear. So let's rerun that same command as I did before. So it's no longer a blank template. What that's, this actually is, is a simple storage account. And I'll go and run that and wait for it to deploy. Now, while this is deploying in the background, the normal question that people come up with at this point is how do we do this? Where do we get this information from? We can't really type this correctly ourselves off the top of our heads, so we have to have some reference location that will be up here. Learn.microsoft.com slash Azure slash templates. And what you can do here is you can come down and pick whatever you were looking for. So in this case, for example, a storage account. So if we go and have a look at storage, Or if you want storage, if we scroll down and find storage down here and look at storage accounts, you'll be able to see here is the ARM template examples that we can actually extract things from and all the settings related to storage accounts and what each of those properties actually do for us. You can do that for any of the resources that are available to deploy inside Azure. If you've actually got third party things you're working with, like for example, Sophos 60 firewalls or Cisco equipment or any other third party things you might find find on the marketplace, you are going to need to RTFM or read the manual uh, to find out how those are actually used as ARM templates. So dropping back to my deployment, my deployment seems to here uh, have succeeded. If we go and check my resource group, refresh that, we can see that simple storage account has deployed. If we go into it, you'll actually be able to see the template here uh, that has been inserted into the Azure API. And if we go into my resource group, you'll see that my ARM template bana demo banana has actually been deployed here. Now, what we might want to do is create reusable templates. This template itself is perfectly fine. Uh, but it will redeploy the same thing every single time. What we might actually want to do is add some changes into this template. So let's drop back into our VS code here and let's go and start to add in some parameters. So what I'm going to do is just underneath this content version block here, I'm going to paste in a parameters block. And one of these parameters is going to be called storage name. We can make this storage name reusable by pasting it instead of the name section down here. And what you'll notice is that has actually gone green and our storage name is a type of string with a max length minimum of three and a max length of 24. This will be prompted 
for the de uh, this will be prompted when you actually make a deployment so again let's do that process save deploy see what it actually looks like so save the file redeploy to github uh, we'll just commit that again back to main push to origin generally you shouldn't commit to main yes i know every programmer is currently screaming at the screen right now but no worries it works for this demo okay guys so you've reached the midpoint of the video uh, you know the routine, hashtag like and subscribe, uh, click right down there, that subscribe button really helps me out. If you can do that right now, that would be great. I'll wait. I don't know why I did that, I've got no watch. But yeah, button right down there. Cool. Alright, on with the video. Let's drop back into our Azure environment, and let's drop back into our Azure portal. Uh, what I want to do is I want to come in here again into my dashboard and just do git pull. Whoops. Git pull. Let's update that resource. That's great. And let's do new AZ resource group deployment again. And let's change the name this time to simple storage account with params. Because now I run it, you can see it prompts me for a storage name. So I'm going to call this again Mike arm um, template demo banana 2 because I know that this is um, valid can't validate the argument and storage now and the character length is 26 characters too long okay so let's go and change the name of that what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a new storage account name and we'll call this Mike store with params and we'll whack enter on that what it's done there is it's prompted me for storage name which was the parameter that we specified here within the arm template this now makes it reusable we could go and specify many other settings down here on storage accounts if we wanted to and we could redeploy this many different times with different names just as proving the point let's just go and add another parameter down here and uh, we're going to add in uh, another one called storage sku so let's go and change that storage name pop a comma on there and paste that you've got to remember to get all your curly brackets in line on your arm templates or things aren't going to work this is why having things like the ARM template plugins and having colors for all of our curly brackets actually helps us out a lot inside our environment. So we're going to take storage SKU down here and we're going to change this parameter underneath SKU into parameters storage SKU. Drop that right in there. Also notice the storage SKU actually has a default parameter attached to it called standard LRS. So since this parameter actually has a default value of standard LRS, when you deploy it, it will automatically populate with this value unless you actually manually specify the storage SKU during the deployment process. Essentially, it will pre-fill it. What we're going to do now is we're going to add in something more interesting. We're going to add in a template function because this template itself is not just about static information we can actually go and call upon other resources that exist inside this template one of the things we might want to do here is adjust the location of the resource itself now this resource location here of east us we could turn that into a parameter or alternatively if we go back and have a look at our azure portal remember our resource groups actually have locations as well location of the resource group does not need to match up with the location of the resources inside it but maybe we want that what we can do here is we can add another parameter but not a normal parameter and this parameter down here is going to be called location but notice this parameter of location if we go and paste it in underneath location 
go and change east us so it points to that parameter it's actually set to resource group dot location so what this is actually going to do this is a function hench whites in yellow it's actually going to read the resource group that it is deployed to and read the location of the resource group that it is actually deployed to and then use that as the default value for the location of this storage account something else we might want to approach here is the actual storage name to do this, we're going to actually create something called a variable on top of this. So we have our parameters here, which contain storage name, storage SKU, um, and our location down here. That's our three parameters. That's lovely. Let's go and create another section underneath here. And we're going to create a section called variables. So within this variables, we've got a couple of extra bits and bobs in here okay so we have something called concat and we have unique string and we have resource group dot id so the unique string section down here creates a 13 character hash value and the parameters you pass the return value for this tutorial um, you're going to use the resource group id for the hash value so this is going to actually create a unique string based off this unique number of the resource group id and this concat function is going to actually take multiple values and concatenate the result. So it's going to take, take the parameters of storage prefix and this unique string, and it's going to weld those two things together for us. So what we're going to do is we're going to change our storage name to storage prefix. We'll just modify that max length down there from 3 to 11. Since our storage account is essentially a script that's running, it may also be useful to have outputs at the end of the script. For example, here within storage accounts, it might be useful to actually get things like the endpoints for your new storage accounts. So if we come down here, paste this in the end, outputs for a value of reference variables unique storage name dot primary endpoints that will display when this is actually built. One final thing I just need to make a change to here, it's prompting me because there's a little underline. There is no parameter called storage name anymore. There is actually a variable called unique storage name. So I need to pop that in there. Just so that actually lines up. And change that from parameter to a variable. From here, I can save this ARM template, upload this back to GitHub again. We'll just commit that to main. I should really name all these things, but just for a demo, it doesn't particularly matter. Pop back into my Azure portal and pop back into my Cloud Shell, Cloud Shell here. I'll do another git pull. And what we'll do is we'll just do a cat on Azure deploy.json just to make sure it's here. Now, if you don't want to go and view code like this inside Cloud Shell, one of the uh, most useful things for you to do is actually use not cat for concatenate, but use code instead. If you use code, you'll actually get uh, a nice VS code kind of output here directly within the Cloud Shell to go and review things. So since we know that this is actually our latest copy, we can close that editor and we will rerun this deployment and we'll run simple storage and we'll we'll name this actually nothing and we'll just whack enter on here it's going to ask me for a storage prefix i'm going to say uh mic store whack enter on that because remember our storage prefix is actually going to be populated at the end by a unique string which will be unique inside Azure itself. So let's wait for that to deploy and we'll see what the outputs kind of look like. After our deployment we can see our outputs are now complete and it has done what we wanted it to do which was to give us our actual endpoints for this storage account. If we drop back into my resource groups and refresh my resource group you will see that Mike store has been given not just a store name, but it's also been given a unique code on the end of it, stored in central US, which is the location of the resource group itself. And you know the routine, hashtag like and subscribe, and I hope you enjoyed this video and will join me next time. Goodbye.